subscribe share the video it'll be greatly appreciated from the bottom of my heart my peeps my people's peep squad is in the building what's going on happy friday to each and every one of y'all it's so good to see you what's going on felicia butler what's going on emma crawford how you guys doing hope you guys are having a wonderful friday baby i'm trying to hold it together <laughs> lord have mercy i've been trapped in the house because you know this 19 got me isolated in my crib in my house like lord him mercy i don't know how anybody does time because time ain't no joke for real for real what's up speaks what's up sugar mama how y'all doing how y'all feeling what's going on and can you believe next friday is my birthday and i'm sick like this is not cool i have plans i wanted to do things but in any event i just want to say thank god i will be here next friday for my birthday okay because you know a lot of people didn't make it when they caught you know the 19 so you know i gotta say that i'm blessed even though i might still be locked up in the crib you know what i'm saying but thank god i'm here and thank god that you guys are here what's up keisha how you doing what's going on i'm feeling a lot better but this has been a crazy week yes it's been so it's been it's been off the chain and baby i've been curled up in a knot in a ball coffin just sick like lord have mercy I haven't had the flu in like, I don't know how many years, 15 years. And so having this was like, what? What's going on? What's happening? I have, I drunk so much water. Let me tell you, water is your best friend, especially alkaline water is your best friend. I got an alkaline water machine that's hooked up to my sink, that's hooked up to my bathroom. So therefore I just get pure water, pure alkaline water without all the harsh stuff in it so that helps a lot too good water helps but in any event let's get to it let's talk about it yes thank you emma i hope i do feel better next friday i can't believe i'm getting older i am a obi baby a obit <laughs> let me stop let me stop but you know what i gotta thank god that i'm gonna be here you know what i'm saying like for real for real so in any event let's get to it let's talk about the situation let's talk about what's going on did y'all see the the battle with you know stephanie mills and shaka khan lord have mercy last night i wasn't feeling good or whatever the case may be i turned on the tv the tv goes to youtube you know what i mean and then i'm seeing two people on stage singing and i couldn't really see who was on stage singing i didn't know what was going on all i know is i heard two Two people on stage off beat i was like what is happening like who is this singer why are they so off beat maybe there's something wrong maybe there's something wrong with my auto so i'm checking my auto i'm checking everything i'm checking the sounds i'm checking everything like lord have mercy with stephanie mills and um shaka khan all i heard was off beat i was like what song is this i couldn't even i couldn't even you know you know, dissect what song they were singing because it was all offbeat. I don't know if it was be Stephanie Stephanie Mills was offbeat because of Shaka Khan or whatever the case was. I was like, who yo, this don't look good. Like, what is happening? What is going on? I was like, I was like, help me, Jesus. What? <laughs> I'm like, Lord have mercy. I was just like, oh my God. So then I was just like, what is happening? Okay, so then. I was like, yo, this is offbeat. Like, they're, they're offbeat. They're not even singing the words that we can hear in the background. What is going on? So I continued to watch. And then I seen Stephanie Mills. She got up and she did her thing. And she performed very well. And she didn't have no problems. And she didn't have no issues. But when it came to Shaka Khan, Shaka Khan, what was going on in this situation? Shaka, I was looking at her. I was like, Lord have mercy. Please don't let her fall off the stage. She was going up and down. She was trying to dance and move. It was like, yo, when you watched it, you can see the big difference of how Stephanie Mill took care of herself and how, you know, health is important to her. And then you look at Shaka Khan is like, oh my God, Shaka, like what's going on? Because, you know, like, 
I was just scared for her the whole time. And then I did recently find out that Shaka Khan and um, Stephanie Mills were not going to do the versus battle. And Stephanie Mills did an interview with Jasmine Brand and basically said that her and Shaka Khan are not going to do the versus battle. They were There was something going on that they didn't like the way they was talked to, the way that they was treated, the money or whatever. And she said, we ain't doing it. So I'm like, okay. <laughs> and then I know I watched the battle. So they, I guess they end up working it out with Trilla. They end up working it out, you know, with Swiss Beats and everybody else that's involved in the situation. But yeah, it was it was a sad sight to see. Um, I was very hurt, but at the same time, I was supporting Shaka Khan. And you know, everyone said that she was higher than Akuda Brown. Everybody said that she thought that she was Frosty the Snowman or she was Rudolph the Red Nosed Reindeer, the way that she was patting and pretending like she was on, you know, she had a good time on her hand, the words that she was missing. Like it was just like, Lord have mercy, she did not care at all point blank period. I don't know what was going on. I hope that was the case that you know she she was on she was riding a white horse or whatever the case. Um that would be okay or whatever in my opinion but to you know there's also speculations that people feel like shaka khan has you know possibly dementia you know possibly you know she had a stroke possibly this possibly that all types of different scenarios that they people were giving about shaka khan's health that she had a stroke you know she has alzheimer's or you know dementia things of that nature i read her behind then I have them things going on. So in any event, you know, we send prayers to Shaka Khan. And let me tell you, Stephanie Mills is a good friend, point blank period, because Shaka Khan was all over the place. She wasn't trying to sing. She gave her microphone to her daughter. Her daughter got up on stage and she sang. You know, her daughter could have practiced a little bit more if she knew that she was going to be filling in for her mama. She knew her mama couldn't sing. She knew her mama couldn't remember the words. She knew her mama was, you know, something was going on with Shaka Khan because daughter was right there. I guess the people, that was their backup plan. So she, But her daughter did a great job. But she could have rehearsed a little bit more because she knew she was going to fill in for her mama. And Shaka didn't even want the microphone. She kept giving it to Stephanie Mills pointed it out on her daughter like she didn't want to sing she would hide in the back i was like damn and i just thought that this was a bad rep bad bad representation of shaka khan hopefully shaka can come out and do you know get on her instagram get on twitter and start singing and be coherent and things of that nature because if anything this is probably going to stop people from going to see shaka live you know what i'm saying like shaka khan shaka khan I never knew love like this before. Stephanie Mills, Stephanie Mills killed it. But when I first turned on, they were both, it was off tune. I was saying to myself, who are these two drunks on a microphone on this platform, <laughs> on Trilla? I'm like, what? And then I had to get close. I had to get close and listen to little Bell. I was like, Lord, why are they off beep? And then Stephanie Mills came up and she killed it. She killed each and every song. She jumped in. She helped Shaka Khan with the situation. And, you know, she was being very supportive. She was trying to talk to, you know, Shaka, Shaka Khan. I don't know what was going on with her. Her outfit was nice. I like that little thing she got around her belly. That right there is on point. And I was just like, Lord, like this was... Mm. But I'm glad they got the platform that, you know, people could see them. And in any event, even though Shaka Khan, you know, didn't perform, really, she did a, she, all the, come on. But what she did, even the background music was so beautiful that people that don't know her would go check it out and probably Google the music and search it and things of that nature. But it, it was just like... Lord, they couldn't take her off stage, you know what I'm saying? When she, when she was there, people said that she was started to drink the sh sh Ciroc. And when she had that Ciroc, everything went crazy. So I'm just like, Lord, Lord. But in any event, you know, she, she walked off stage. She said goodbye. Shaka didn't want to sing. Shaka, I was like, Shaka, did they pay you? Was the money too low? They already had a dispute before they came in. So did Shaka just say, I'm going to give them whatever? They gonna get what Shaka's gonna give them. The last time I seen Shaka Khan perform it was about maybe six years ago, and she was nothing like what you see on Trilla or the Versus Battle at all. So I was just, I was presently shocked and surprised. Like I was like, oh my god, if you was in that front row, you know that she wasn't singing them words, and it was just like, 
she just gave up on some of them songs like she <laughs> she just gave up on some of them songs <laughs> she just gave up hey tawana what's going on just a t please what's going on how you doing who else am i missing what's going on what's up francis how you doing what's up sugar mama and so in any event it was like one of them situations so let's move on to tammy roman as you guys know i did a small little um video um which is on the youtube better you short videos about tammy roman and um the way that she looked and you know kind of being concerned or whatever the case may be but in any event you know when it comes to tammy roman she ends up doing the she ended up doing one of them shows i don't know which one it is <laughs> she she ended up doing one of them shows and you know basically she was talking about her marriage to you know um the young dude she was talking about her marriage to him and what they have going on and i was just like okay she was giving out a whole lot of information but i was just shocked to, to hear that she told reggie youngblood she told mr youngblood hey baby if you want a baby because i can't give you that baby as far as you know i don't want to use my eggs i don't want to birth the baby which we know that she's not able to do that because unfortunately lying ass evelyn told us that that was the case you know we've seen it at the reunion and things of that nature and plus we see what she looks like now what she, what tammy roman looks like now there's no way um you know her body is ready to gain all that weight and then especially with the diabetes and things of that nature so that's not going to happen so but she cared enough about her husband reggie to basically say to him hey listen you're the only child uh, you we can take a year or two years off you go find a woman make a baby with her and then you know you can bring the baby back i'll help raise the baby but as far as birthing the baby you know breastfeeding and all that other stuff and raising a kid from jump up you know coming out of the womb nope that's not gonna be me so i was just like damn so in any event you know that really like shocked viewers like oh my god you're giving your husband permission to go be with another woman why marry him in the first place tammy why do this some there were so many people that was just like nah this ain't right and there's some people that are saying hey listen you know she's doing the right thing by him and you know because he's the only child and so so his legacy can live on she's basically is giving him you know two years off if he would have took him two years off and got somebody pregnant or whatever the case may be the way to me i don't feel like tammy would be as cool as she's saying that she is on tv and reggie hasn't did it yet or unless reggie is going to be coming out with having a baby and this is why maybe tammy roman is open to returning to basketball wives because about a couple of weeks ago tammy said that you know she was open to returning to basketball wife evelyn is gone ding dong the witch is gone so in any event then also there was a lot of rumors about you know tammy roman returning to not returning but actually being on the real housewives of atlanta but in any event so if we hear that reggie got a baby or some woman said that reggie got a baby then it took place and basically she was doing damage control in any event but i believe on um basketball wife before tammy exited the show i believe that she was open to reggie you know getting the baby somewhere else she didn't want to deny him that because he doesn't have any children and she does you know what i'm saying but in any event you know that's a hard situation because you love this man he loves you but the one thing you can't give him is another child and i believe if tammy was able to have a baby she probably would have had a baby with reggie in the beginning stages but i don't think that she was capable of conceiving and i don't think she wanted to go to go through ibf and get a surrogate and things of that nature they could also adopt too as well they can go get a child from the adoption agency but when it comes down to it reggie want a child to carry his name and carry his blood and so in any event i don't know um i just feel like damn reggie because reggie wants a kid and it's just like you know getting with an older woman that already has mature adult kids and wanted kids from her i just feel like he gave himself the short end of the stick and tammy knows that and that's why she gave him the opportunity to go out there and create his own seed because she know like damn like you young like you know what i mean so what do you guys think about that situation what are your thoughts tell me <laughs> tell me what are your thoughts about tammy saying baby reggie go out there for two years do what you need to do and bring the baby back home 
<laughs> I know, you know, I got issues, Ralph. Me and you are the same boat. That's why we get along. <laughs> We're in the same boat. Hey, I'm JTTP93. Felicia said, What's up? So I'm saying, What's up with you? Because I didn't see you. You know what I mean? I got my glasses on, but baby, I still can't see. <laughs> so, you guys, let me know what you think about that situation. Um, would you, hey, Diane Harris, would you guys be open to that? Like, if you was in Tammy's position, would you tell your husband, hey, listen, go out there and find you a baby, mama, and then come back? A lot of people were saying that Tammy's trying to co contribute to single mothers. I was like, Lord, that was like, you know, people were saying that, oh, my God, look at these Hollywood people. They are so weird. But at the same time, to me, I think if you really love somebody and you can't give them what they really want and they really want it, you know, either you don't go all the way with them and you don't get married to them or you give them the opportunity to go get it, in my opinion. Will I be comfortable in doing that? Oof, let me see. If I got with a young man right now, I'm not trying to have no baby at all. But I could have a baby if I wanted to. Like, my everything's still working, you know what I mean? Everything is still functioning, it's still going, it's still saying, ooh, la, la, where's the baby at every month, you know what I mean? But say, I don't want to have another child. And then a young man comes along and say, he's in his 20s. <laughs> I don't, let, let's say 30. Let's not say 20 because 20 years old, I'm going to have to whoop him. And I don't want to do that. So um, I don't know. I don't know. I, I, I don't have an answer. I am bugging. Was there something wrong with Shaka Singh's? impaired on stage yeah no you ain't bugging she was definitely messed up wait if he end up falling for that's why everybody was saying just the t please what about if he falls in love with that woman what about if he wants to be with that woman you know so i don't know okay say if i wasn't able to have kids okay let's put it in there say if i wasn't able to have kids anymore and he wanted kids and I wanted him to make sure his family last name continues. I, I still don't know if I, 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 it's the right thing to do. But at the same time, the man knows that that's going to cause problems. There's going to be issues about it. Tammy's not, no one's going to be like, okay, he's out there with another, okay, you're going to be single. So he's gone. You're going to feel like, I can't believe you did this. You left and used with this other woman, blah, blah, blah. <coughs> But Tammy might be okay with it because her, 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 excuse me, her daughters are grown. But I don't know if I would, if I would do that. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> oh God, I don't know. But in any event, I don't know if I would be okay with doing that. I probably wouldn't enter into a marriage with that person unless it's really out their system unless this is something that they are consenting to and they know that they have an option they need to go take care of that option and then possibly we can get married but i wouldn't want to uh, deprive them of that of being a father you know what i mean at the same time so you guys let me know what you think about the situation let's talk about mr rentenhouse mr carl rentenhouse he has been found not guilty on all charges lord have mercy girl he is free he is running the streets he is celebrating he probably got you know ninety nine thousand dollars in his pockets too as well i knew he was not going to jail at all when he first got locked up and i was you know on youtube and there was a youtube channel basically talking about the case and it was doing a fundraiser for him and they raised a million dollars for him in 25 minutes at that moment i knew he wasn't going to go to jail and also i knew he was isn't going to go to jail like that because the system is built for him you know the system is made for him to succeed with the system so he is free and lord have mercy peace and blessing and healing to the family members that lost their loved one and they watch kaya walk right out the door into freedom mm -mm -mm. lord have mercy if you think that 
<laughs> that people that look like me and you got a fair shot in this country, then <laughs> you are sadly mistaken. But in any event, you guys let me know what you think about that situation. Then moving on to Young Dolph, like Lord have mercy. I can't believe he's going. Like this has been a couple of days. You know, I've been sick, so I haven't talked about the situation. But it just, it was just like when I first saw it on Instagram, I kind of like, I just, I just gasped. I just gasped like, yo, for real? Like, this is for real? And I was like, yo, they finally got him. Like, the whole world knew. Everybody knew that there was a hit put out on him. You know what I mean? From Charlotte, from Memphis to L.A., California. People was chasing him around trying to make him depart from this earth. You know, he got his sprinter, you know, hit a hundred times. And then... He, he got hit up in LA. He was running from there. And that was all on the news from the hotel hanging here. It was like everywhere this man went was circling death. You know what I mean? Which is so tragic. And then he has children. He has a children mother that he's leaving behind. It's just like so much going on in this situation. You know, a lot of people or, you know, have the regular names of the situation. You know, the regular people are saying that, you know, um, it's Yo Gotti is young black gangster because they were beefing for a long time. It's just like, damn, this dude owned his masters and not too many rappers own their masters and he owned his masters. So therefore all his money was coming to him. All his shows that he was doing was coming to him. He was buying his kids houses and things of that nature. This is a car that he had, you know, you saw he's riding around Memphis and this type of car, everybody know who you are. And to me, I felt like it was a little selfish for him to be driving around in his car when he got his kids dependent on him. He got his whole family dependent on him. He got his baby mama dependent on him and all his baby mamas and everybody else. And the community, the works that he did, he gave away hundreds of thousands of dollars to the community. The community out there where he from, they chose him. They didn't choose young black gangster, young black gangster, whatever his name is, or that other dude. They didn't choose, they chose, Memphis chose young Dolph. That's who they rock with. That's who they wanted. But in any event, when it comes down to the situation, you know, he's not here. His life was just taken away. And, you know, he was at the bakery buying some cookies for his mother. You know, he just touched back down in Memphis. And it's just like, damn, like, it's just really a sad situation because we all knew anybody that saw the stories about his, um, co him coming in contact with near death experience experiences and almost departing from this earth plenty of times because people, you know, was looking for him. There was a hit on him. You know what I mean? And a lot of people were saying, well, you know, Jay-Z should have got involved because, you know, Young Gotti, Black Gangster, they're kind of affiliated with his label. And, you know, they should have stopped this beef. Like we, and this is Young Black Gangster right here. This is the dude that went to World's Fargo and act a fool outside. <laughs> And so this is the, the bakery. And so the bakery actually has a GoFundMe now because they can't open. And they've been receiving threats, you know, via phone, via email, via Instagram. And they basically want to open up their business. And their business been here for about 20 to 30 something years. And they can't open their business anymore, you know. So it's just really altogether a sad situation. Um, point blank, period. You know, the people came out to just look at it like it was just like yo and then there was an earthquake that happened right after that so you know a lot of people saying god wasn't happy that this happened you know what i mean and things of that nature that they really lost somebody that was really had a lot of strength and a lot of power you know he you know he was almost he almost had nine lives he escaped like three or four he escaped like four times and i don't know young Dolph history you know, usually when I talk about rappers, usually I hear people say, well, they got bodies on them and things of that nature. I haven't heard anything about him having bodies, but if you guys want to call in, you want to jump on a stream yard and you want to talk about, you know, what I just, you know, recently went over. And so that's cool too as well, because I'm not trying to stay here. I'm not trying to be on live that long just because, you know, I'm trying to, I'm trying to heal my doctor said, girl, you better get your black butt to sleep. <laughs> you better get some rest. <laughs> yes, being a rapper is a dangerous job, y'all. Like, it ain't easy. Like, before, it was, it was a different situation. We did have things that did happen in hip-hop and things of that nature, but not to the severity of what we see now. To what we see now is just like, 
it's every other day or every other month and it's always big names but one thing i know for sure what's that dude's name he's probably glad that his name is not, travis scott right now is probably glad that no one's talking about his situation because right now everyone's talking about young Dolph. and so a lot of people are saying that they wish that you know your boy jay-z got involved your boy jay-z because he's down with you know young Gotti or whatever the case may be and young gangster they got affiliate managers and things of that nature that's that's down with rock management and things like that that if he if they would have came down and basically stopped his beef it's like the whole world knew the government everybody knew or every time that you've seen a story about young Dolph escaping death um that was because there was a hit you know and so in any event um soldier boy definitely got involved into the situation he got himself kicked off of the millennium tour to go to memphis and 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 some parts of tennessee because he's been out because he was beefing with young Dolph, and basically they was going back and forth but young Dolph wasn't really paying him no mind so now soldier boy is beefing with young Dolph's cousin you know young Dolph is also related to juice world juice world they were cousins and when juice world died i really thought there was something sketchy about juice world dying and um, what I did think about Juice World is that he was forced to carry these things on a plane that he was carrying on the plane. And he didn't want to do the time. And he, I guess he was just done. But in any event, there's a lot of suspicion going on with that situation. But I never really d doubt, dived into that situation. But Soldier Boy has been promoting a song called, I can't even say the name of the song that has to do with young Dolph because they were beefing and now he was acting like he was a part of it he's acting like he's the big gang so we know soldier has been involved in some gangster activities and he escaped you know with his life a couple of times well twice but in any event so now he's out here wiling on instagram wiling on the net just doing the most as soldier boy does but i think it's very disrespectful what he's doing and i think he's trying to take uh a book out of Takashi 69 because Takashi 69 kind of did the same thing when it came to Young Von, King Von, I said Young Von, King Von, and also when it came to Little Reese, you know what I mean? And it going to Old Block and Blah the Third and all that. And so Soldier Boy knows how to stay relevant, get himself in the middle of things. So in any event, they done kicked his ass off the Memphis tour of the Millennium Tour. Soldier Boy jumped online and said, Oh, you internet people, you make me sick complaining. No, it wasn't the internet people, it was the people that is um hosting the Millennium Tour. Basically, knew that you was gonna be danger in danger if you touched down in Memphis point blank period that was going to be the situation all the way together <laughs> soldier boy do need to sit down somewhere like lord so soldier boy has been out here flexing online i mean he said he's been on the shade room for like three weeks straight just wiling out beefing with young Duff, beefing with young Duff people going back and forth going back and forth then unfortunately rest in peace rest in power to young Duff. you know he ended up departing i was just and i was sad just because i knew that there was i really felt like there was no way for him out because if he would have moved anywhere maybe he would have had a lot more years you know, to be here on this earth, if he would have moved, if he would have got out of Memphis. But you got to understand, they caught him in other cities, in other states, and, and 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 tried to have him depart from this earth. You know what I mean? So once there's a bounty on you, that means in, in any state, you know, people are going to come for you. Especially, you know, I don't know if you guys know about Murder, Inc. and Company. That was like a really big thing back in the day with the mob with, you know, um when the mafia first started to be begun to have murder ink and company you know and so there's a lot of people for hire just like you know um it's just sad it's just sad because he did have a vision and um there was a lot of things he would do him right and when i actually originally saw the story i can't think of the reporter's name but i'm gonna post it to my community wall it was a young black woman she had to be around her late 30s and she was actually or maybe she was in her 40s but she looked beautiful and she's from memphis and she was a reporter and she was reporting on the story and she basically really reported on Dolph 
Like, you know, she was at the crime scene and she has so much compassion for him. And she started to speak. She was like, I don't want you guys to get the wrong idea that I'm trying to coddle him. But I'm just going to tell you things that I know that he did. What he did in this community. What he did for that person. What he did for this. You know, and 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 how he was iconic here. And he gave a lot of people hope and things of that nature because he gave back. And even in this video, as you see him on the screen, he's about to give away a thousand, a hundred thousand dollars. And before, and then also he mentions in this video, you see on the screen that he already gave away $50,000 to somebody. And then he just keeps can continue to get give away money. And also I believe today or yesterday, young Dolph has a giveaway, Turkey giveaway, a food giveaway from where he's from and Memphis. And sadly, you know, it was canceled and things of that nature. Then also at his memorial service, you know, people showed up and they wanted, they, they wanted drama. So, but like when I was going back to the Jay-Z situation, as you can see, when it comes to Jay Prince, he brought, he squashed the beef between Drake and Pusha T. And now he squashed the beef between him and um, Kanye West. And every time there's something going on with Houston and Houston rappers or people that he's affiliated, connected to, or making money with, he squashes the beef because he doesn't see anything and making money off of beef. He just knows what it ends what is going to happen and we just see and we have been seeing previously over and over and over and over how these young rappers are departing from this earth they are making the money to you know redo their community which young Dolph was doing but at the same time they end up stretched out laid out and it's really just sad all the way together so a lot of people calling for ogs that are affiliated with these rappers that got this type of beef that you know they want you to depart from this earth to get involved and just not close a blind eye to it because this is setting the tone and really setting a big tone but in any event it's just a sad situation all the way together his kids are gonna hurt you know and everybody everybody hurts when you lose people especially somebody with their masters and so on to the next situation, there was, you know, a memorial service or a candlelight visual that was held for young Dolph, you know, in front of the cookie place, the bakery. And, you know, these three guys, you know, end up doing what they do down the street from the visual and then end up getting arrested because, you know, they hurt somebody. So it is what it is. Just sad all the way around. Pray for our people that we can just find love. And healing and not look at each other as the enemy and just break all these ties of taking one another out. But in any event, we get to Young Pharaoh. Did you guys hear about Young Pharaoh? Young Pharaoh has been doing so much work. He's put so much work in to the community before, you know, he got free he, or he got off of um, home confinement and things of that nature. And then he moved down to Texas. He was in L.A. for a little bit. He brought a Lambo, got a big house. He was with Golden Beauty. That was his ba one of his baby mamas that was with him while he was on home confinement when he was in buffalo new york and then recently there's been so many different videos you know if you watch shut up and react you know he posts everything about what young pharaoh's doing how he's doing it when he's doing it what he say and we just really saw a fall of young pharaoh i didn't think i didn't know it was gonna fall like this okay once he done said a lot of things and did a lot of different things online but one of the things that he did bring he brought the google whistleblower to his youtube channel and basically gave us so much information and data that we would never ever understand but we do understand because it was broken down to us and that's one of the reasons why a lot of things happen but we got a lot of he gave out a lot of information a lot of information that was very important to all people not just people that look like me and you but everybody and now to come to find out that this young man you know, is actually went to his baby mother's house, Golden Beauty, and lit the house up with steel. And the kids was in the house. And allegedly, he was on Instagram basically saying, allegedly, this is what I heard secondhand. I didn't see it for myself. Um, 
that oh the kids nobody's in the garage nobody was there blase in the third and so you know i guess he, he just went to a breaking point him and golden beauty been going back and forth online he alleged that she she got rid of his youtube page she got rid of his you know instagram she's dating other people he's dating other people they just really you just really seen the fall of pharaoh because he wasn't like this when he was doing videos day in and day out doing um you know powerpoint videos for hours and hours teaching knowledge and just breaking down all types of books and and trying to understand and figure out and then all of a sudden you see him out here talking about a bop bop you know golden beauty i bop bop this one i bop bop that one it was like yo then he always said black woman's god now he's just saying this and that it's just like something cracked you know and golden beauty she's not innocent in this situation for someone that is cracking as you as we all can see crack the last thing you do is add fuel to the fire talk about them do this now go to the police do what you got to do file your reports move she's living in a house that has his name on it he's chasing her down because he's she's with this one and that one she's chasing him down because he's with this one and that one one minute they're together one minute they're not they're um you know but everything that she said that he did he said he did it so this is just all crazy lord i don't know ralph but it's just really and i was always wondering why saru and seti saru seti you know seti wasn't getting involved because the only person i thought that young pharaoh would listen to would be seti because that's the only person he respected that was the og and the conscious community and seti is my dude i love me some seti seti like seti will have you go to work tomorrow and be like you better bow down to me today is my day what's up miss t Dolph was in his hometown buying cookies so sad he was really helping people yes girl yes 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 miss t it's just sad all the way up what's up uncle charles <laughs> uncle charles is in the building what's going on with you yes hey lisa harris what's going on so um just watching everything when it comes to young Pharaoh and when it comes to his baby's mother, Golden Beauty. I remember her being in the background for many years, you know, while he was on probation. He praised her. She praised him. They look so beautiful together. They had the kid. Then all of a sudden, it just, I, when I found out that, you know, she did a video saying, Young Pharaoh kicked me out of my house, you know, because he ended up showing that he brought a big, nice mansion in Texas. I was like so happy. And, you know, he was suing YouTube and things of that nature. I think they owed him like 200 grand, 300 grand, or whatever the case may be and then i was like why would he kick her out and then i see him in the lambo and all this other stuff and he just started acting different and acting weird and then she was saying well he's doing this he's doing that it might be a mental breakdown it could be mk ultra but this guy was giving real information that can change your life on his channel and then for him to turn around and just to see this see that he go to his baby mother's house and lit it up with the kids in it and a lot of people are saying that he was at his breaking point because she was keeping him from his kids and yes she was golden beauty was keeping this man for his kids from his kids but at the same time if you see his behavior would you entrust your kids to be with with him so you had that situation whether that was true so it was like a lot of tit for tat and then i i think he just he just broke and plus he couldn't control her no more she's dating other guys she got other guys around but he's dating other women and all this other stuff it was just like people try to say that they're cool with open relationship and having this one and thapples triples and all that other stuff nah people went people ain't that cool with it like that especially when you wasn't like that in the beginning it wasn't like that in the beginning between him and golden beauty and you know and then just watching him you know deteriorate on online basically admitting to crimes and all types of crazy stuff like like yo like even a, a regular dude would know that what he's saying and he's putting out there is bad for him like they can pick him up in t day and he did that for him to have that brain that he does have to do that and then also him talking about how he helped you know he could be a lawyer because of the things that he helped in his case to help his lawyer defend him and just to see all that fall apart it's heartbreaking 
it's, it's heartbreaking just to see Golden Beauty and Farrell just fall like this quick and fast. Was it because of a few dollars? What was it all about? I mean, I mean, they were thick as thieves and so happy. But they, they, they rejoiced. She was there sometimes when he was doing these long ass lives and these lectures and stuff. And all of a sudden, she's like, oh, he's the the worst and they just crumbled and it's something just very suspicious about everything like who what is really behind this is there a mental issue and that's what it was looking like and sometimes when you get to a certain age if you do have mental issues sometimes there's an avoidance but something cracking and happen can open that up and then boom, bada bean. But also there was allegations that maybe he tried this, maybe he tried that. And once you try these all mind altering, you know, things, sometimes people don't go back to normal. So I don't know. Just really sad. But in any event, moving on from that situation, let's talk about Portia Williams. Did you guys hear about Portia Williams? Portia Williams in her new book, The Pursuit of Portia, baby. She said that she was dating the R&B legend, or Kelly. And she said that, you know, when he picked her up, well, his people picked her up from the airport. She thought she was going to go to a studio. This was in 2006. And baby, she was only 25 years old. And she was she wanted a, a career and music. And she just knew R. Kelly would give it to her. So she went to go meet him. He flew her out because she ended up getting in contact with somebody that's friends with R. Kelly and meeting up with them. And bada bing, bada boom, Portia that went down to Chicago. And when she was picked up in the escalator, baby, when she was picked up in that escalator, she thought that she was going to a studio. And she did not go to a studio. She went to R. Kelly's house. And he had her waiting around in the foyer or the living room or the dining room. And baby, then they took her upstairs to his bedroom. What's up, Norris Tony? And she said she waited there for hours. And I don't know if he is or not. They're saying that he's on a run, Ralph. They're saying that young Farrah was on. I'm just so disappointed and just so hurt by it because there was a lot of information. Like, I searched for knowledge and information about a lot of different things that's outside of me. That's something that's outside of my realm. And just to see, because he had a lot of information. I mean, I'm talking about years ago. I'm not talking about last year, the year before. I'm talking about years. He And, and he... It's just bad. But in any event, Portia Williams says that, you know, she got to R. Kelly's crib and she was downstairs waiting forever. Then somebody escorted her to his bedroom and she waited on him for a few, baby. And then all of a sudden he came in the room and when he came in the room, he said, baby, drop down and get your ego on. No, he didn't. Well, what he said was, you know, undress. <laughs> and she was like, he told me to undress and I didn't know what to do. I was froze at that moment that I put my Myself in a situation this is what it is i gotta do this and basically confused and shocked but she already thought that it was her fault and she couldn't you know do anything about it then pause and then she went back two more times but the third time that she went back baby she saw something else going on with several other young women in r kelly's house and she said you know what i hear these sounds these noises uh, i know what it means it's hurting my ears I'm very scared and displeased, and she never spoke to R. Kelly again. So do you guys believe Portia in the comment section on the video that I did drop? Lord have mercy, y'all are dragging Portia so bad. It's like none of y'all believe Portia. Y'all, a lot of people believe that Portia's doing this for a book. They saying Portia would have been said something. Portia would have been ran her mouth. Portia would have been out here telling people. They said when Portia was almost about to get fired from the Real Housewives, she would have brought up R. Kelly. I was like, how come she ain't never brought up R. Kelly? But in any event, Portia said that she did not tell anybody about what happened. She didn't tell her mother, her sisters, or anything because she felt like, you know, she didn't want her mom to feel like it's her fault. She didn't want her mom to feel like, you know, that her mom did something wrong in raising her and things of that nature. So in any event, 
she kept it a secret until the book came out but before the book came out she did have the conversation with her mom and her mom miss diane ended up sharing with portia that she experienced something like that too as well so portia you know and a little bit part of her new book and the pursuit of portia she's giving out information uh, she's leaving us with a cliffhanger of whether she wanted it or whether she didn't want it so i guess um once you guys read the book and let me know and then I'll report on it. <laughs> hey, Jasmine. <laughs> Jasmine said, hell no. Wait, what happened? Young Pharaoh, we'll get back to that. You can call in. Um, R. Kelly was on Destination with Portia and Ricky Smiley in 2016, smiling and singing. Oh, Lord. Oh, Lord. Oh, Lord. Oh, Lord. Virtuous woman. She's so full of oosh. Portia, why? That's what y'all were saying in the comments. I was like, oh, Lord, but... Okay, what I did cover in the video, probably people didn't get all the way to the video, but in some cases where, you know, we know Portia, we know her reputation, we know her background and things of that nature. But in any event, you know, when some when something... Just say, let's just take Portia and R. Kelly out of the situation. So when it's a man and a woman and they're involved in some type of, you know, intimate details, uh, intimate... And sometimes a lot of women don't know that something bad could be happening to them. They feel like they have to go with it. Sometimes they don't understand. Sometimes they're confused about it because, you know, they feel like they have to, you know, they have no other choice. Like, I don't want to be like that person and then cause this big commotion and things of that nature. And so when an incident actually takes place, a lot of women will come back because some of them are still confused. They don't know what really happened. And I can say this from experience because dealing with a lot of young women at one point in time, a lot of them did not know that they were victims. They had no idea that this, what actually took place was something horrific, but they didn't really think that they had the right to say no because they said yes once. You know, and then on top of that, a lot of them don't feel good about their stuff. And they feel like, oh, they they feel hurt. They feel scared. But at the same time, they don't want to believe this person that they're trying to build something with because, you know, they're insecure. They're searching for love. They're searching for this. They don't have how high self-esteem. And so they'll go back and see, is it, was it really that? No, he didn't really do that to me. No way. And they try to fight what's really in front of their face so i did bring that up but that might not be Porsche's situation but a lot of people ask like oh why would a person go back because sometimes people don't even know that they're victims they know something was wrong something ain't right they feel a little bit violated but they don't even understand the definitions of violation and when you have the right to say no when you have the you know when you say no no is no or if you already been with that person before does it mean you have to be with them every time they want you to you know what i mean so a lot of people are confused on a lot of different definitions of no and it and some women a lot are, are um shocked surprised and startled and they think they have to do it because they want to be a pleasing person but they really don't want to do it but they're afraid of displeasing a person so you know there's a whole lot of issues with a lot of different things not saying that this is Porsche's issue, but in any event, everyone said Porsche's out here lying. Lord have mercy, help me, Jesus. <laughs> yeah, abuse. There you go, ten. Yeah, abuse can be so normal in people's lives that they think it's normal, and then they are embarrassed and confused when things unfold. We have to have empathy. Yes, that's very true, and that's a lot of things that I have seen. Like, you would think, oh, your mama should have taught you, your daddy should have taught you, but sometimes mamas don't know sometimes daddies don't know sometimes your friends don't know a lot of these kids are growing up clueless a lot of these kids are growing up not knowing their rights and and all you know but we're not saying that this is portia because clearly everybody's talking about portia and Bono, blah 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 one second my peeps my people i'm a I'm gonna one second.
that people were saying Portia sold her soul you know it was fair exchange she was trying to get in the music business she was trying to get to the top and all these things you know I wasn't there so I don't know I you know I wasn't there so I don't know but in any event yes Portia and I came through y'all she came through with the R. Kelly I was like what Portia like Lord people saying Portia can't keep a secret she would have been said something so what do you guys think about the Porsche situation? Lord have mercy. It's definitely crazy. Um, but in any event, that's her story to tell. And that's the story that she's telling. A lot of people saying that they think it's because, you know, she's trying to sell her book. She want her book to sell. And, you know, she's trying to get ratings for a TV show. So, you know, we are at the age of clout chases. We are at the age of people will make up stories. We are at the age that people lie all the time. How many times they be like, oh, he did this. He did that to me. We come to find out. She don't even know the person. She ain't never seen him. She ain't never even slept with him. Like, so, you know, we at that stage too. And it's just so sad because it takes away from real victims. And then we got these Instagram girls that are here on Ac uh, Rennie or whatever her name is on Academics Everywhere talking about all oh, this. I'm now, I'm blah, blah, blah. I'm going to do this to a man. I want this. He trapped me. All that type of dumb stuff. But the thing about it is people are not teaching the women their rights and things that they need to know to protect themselves as well. And also teaching men their rights and what protects them too as well. Because a lot of times people you know even with dealing with the young girls that I, I have dealt with in the past with the counseling with all the kind of stuff that you couldn't imagine like some some of these cases i was involved in y'all i just really wanted to roll up on on the family like y'all it, it's just a lot of times i sat in my car at night just wanted to drive to their house and just wild out because i couldn't believe parents would do their children like this but they're also boys young boys at the time that I was dealing with too as well that was catching charges you know with you know they're with a woman and you know they are playing around and everything and it goes you know where it goes but they're thinking it's okay and then the girl thinks it's okay but they both feel like something is wrong maybe maybe this maybe that and it's just like a lot of people a lot of young people not even young people older people too because there's women that were 30 25 that don't know what type of encounter they are having and that's the sad thing people wear all these diamonds jewelry gold got houses got cars buying this buying that paying a hundred thousand dollars for this paying 500 for their hair you know 500 racks for their sneakers and stuff like that but they don't even know the basic things in life that actually will help them to survive and even know when they're a victim so you know you got that situation so y'all tell me what y'all think about that so in any event that's Portia Portia done jumped out and said oh Kelly she done jumped out and said oh Kelly oh Kelly I don't know y'all <laughs> it's just crazy and it's also surprising too because you know I didn't hear anything about Portia and R. Kelly you know but now is here and this is what she is saying and what do you guys think about stevie j and faith evans lord have mercy what do y'all think about that whole situation faith evans and stevie j what do y'all think so what do y'all think about stevie j and faith evans you seen the video of that that squalor oh my god did you see the bedroom between faith evans and stevie j what was going on in there and stevie j was accusing her of cheating he was all up in her face he was all up in there telling her to move 
telling her, you're going to do this in my house. You're going to do this to me after I be watching your kids all day. This is a business. She, he's pulling a cover off of Faith Evans, telling Faith Evans, how can you do this to me? There was squalor all over the floor. There was clothes everywhere. The sheets looked dirty. The place looked nasty. It looked like, oh, my God. It don't look like Faith Evans, the R&B. You know, soul singer, Grammy Award winner, and Stevie J were living in a house like that. And the way that they were acting up, I was like, Lord, have mercy. Faith Evans and Stevie J, what is going on? She wouldn't, he wouldn't let her rest. She was like, get out of here. I hate you. I hate you. I hate you. He was like, I hate you too. I was like, what? Like, this is so crazy. Yes. I don't, you know, they back together because, you know, they was at the pork, baby. You know, they was at the beach. <laughs> they was at the beach doing court wills. You know, people were saying that Faith Evans do not have a prenup. So, therefore, people were saying that Stevie J wanted to get with Faith and take her money, baby. But in any event, when it comes to Stevie J's daughter, as you guys know, Savannah from Growing Up Hip Hop, baby, she jumped down on the neighborhood talk and she sent a video cut of evan faith evans on drink drink champs basically saying that she was getting busy so much when she was a young girl you know the eggplant can't do nothing for her no more <laughs> lord have mercy i was just like lord help me jesus help me jesus mm -mm. But you know faith is somewhere <laughs> Faith and Stevie J, I don't know what's going to happen with that situation, but they better be careful because we just seen what happened to Young Pharaoh. Young Pharaoh lost it. He was doing this internet back and forth. His business was out there in the street, and then he ended up losing it, and he went to his baby mama house and let loose on that, and now wants to cut find him. He's already a convicted criminal. He's going to be going to jail for a long time. He's going to be going to jail for a long time. So, yeah, it's just a crazy out here. <laughs> if they smoke that, that's fine. But it seems like something else is going on. Like, Lord, Faith, you better let that man go. <laughs> Stevie, you better let her go. They, I think they're addicted to the craziness. I think they're addicted to whatever they got going on. And they don't want to give up on the situation. But in any event, you know, Jocelyn Hernandez basically said that Faith was cheating on Stevie a long time ago. He came to her house crying about Faith Evans cheating. And then the person that dropped the video on Stevie J and Faith Evans having that, you know, treacherous moment in life where they were arguing over Faith cheating on Stevie. Stevie was confronting her. You know, that person dropped the video and um, that person basically said, that he saw Stevie J cheat on Faith Evans. So it's been a whole lot of cheating going on, baby. And then you got Jocelyn Hernandez. You know, she came out here a while ago. You know, I have a whole playlist of Stevie J, Faith Evans, and how it all started to fall apart because I couldn't believe this. I was like, you know, even Mimi. Mimi was like, you know what? Mimi, Mimi was like, she's so happy that stevie j is actually with faith because she's getting child support and then so we're saying okay we're seeing something good but stevie j just looks so depressed and then faith evans gained a lot of weight so if you've seen the video that tasha k dropped about faith evans and stevie j arguing you would see that faith evans was very skinny in that video and here you see her doing the cartwheels she's very thick in the situation so we're gonna see <laughs> I'm like, Lord have mercy. It's a whole it's a whole lot going on, y'all. And it's just so much more going on. But you guys already know I got, you know what? Portia's the actress. Portia. And so what do you guys think about um what's going on on Girls Trip? <laughs> Portia saw dollar signs. Lord had she saw dollar signs with that book, Lord. <laughs> Y'all are too funny, Virgo. Portia, Portia, the reality actress version of Lord, I can't with you, Virgo. You were all the way there. So, in any event, so you know that's the situation that's going on. 
so there's a whole bunch more so you know tomorrow we'll talk about it but you guys let me know what you think about girls trip what do you think about cynthia bailey and kenya moore's relationship and their friendship is it over who's right and who's wrong i was like lord have mercy here's this shit playing out it's like damn why do two black girls gotta be going against each other why do two black girls gotta have problems all the other girls are getting along well they ain't having no problems they shade a little bit but now it's deeper it's like cynthia she feels hurt she feels betrayed and kenya moore don't give two craps about what cynthia bailey is saying or how cynthia bailey feels she's just basically telling cynthia hey listen the game that you chose to play was very inappropriate and you know nobody wants to judge girls about if they're pretty ugly big booty big breasts and things of that nature basically said her game was so trivial you can play them trivial games in um atlanta but you can't play it in la i mean you can't play with these ladies these ladies ain't no better these ladies are rock yo these ladies come on these ladies are they just got money, but they still what it is in a dress. So I'm just like, Lord, so much is going on. <laughs> Faith Evans face. <laughs> they supposed to be clean. I just hope it don't end up in that situation at all. Virgo crazy. I just hope it don't end up in that situation because we see where Pharaoh's at. But in any event, what do you guys think about girls trip? How, what do you who do you think is wrong? Is Cynthia wrong? I think Cynthia is wrong in the part where she carried her anger and she kept carrying her anger and how mad she was at Kenya. And she should have took a woosa and she should have just relaxed and let it go because then the other ladies, as far as Melissa, as far as Kyle and um, Ramona, they're gonna they're using that against her and then kyle she keeps coming saying oh cynthia i'm sorry cynthia keeps saying yo why you keep apologizing to me i told you it ain't you you kicked it off but i'm mad at kenya so why is kyle keep coming and apologizing to cynthia like she's some innocent victim like cynthia is some big bad wolf i was like lord please let me jump to the screen so i can grab kyle and her insecure ass only reason why she don't want to play the game is because she got body issues she don't like who she is so everybody's supposed to feel like her we don't feel like you we love ourselves and we ain't even got a hundred million in the bank i was so mad let me stop because i started yelling and <laughs> i need to be relaxing y'all <laughs> i need to relax y'all <laughs> it's always something with cynthia kenny is always doing something let cynthia tell her <laughs> there you go bro but what about kenya moore being an hour late to your girl's thing you know she needed your help you know she wanted your support why did kenya come an hour late and she's in the same damn house like lord like i wanted to jump and then melissa like oh she's jealous like yo these people be getting on my nerves y'all <laughs> i used to record myself watching this so you can see how i wild out <laughs> i don't even wild out on camera with you guys <laughs> i'm like lord so you have that situation so it's just like oh my god so you got kyle sitting there trying to she's just trying to get her tea she's just trying to get a piece of the pie she's just trying to be relevant to as well and then and also she looked at kenya so when kyle looked at kenya and was like oh i don't think this is right i don't like this game like oh my god it's making me between choose between my daughters like girl you taking it on a whole different level and then you got what's that girl's name luann luann's out here showing her naked body showing herself to a man that's married this is why you don't have good luck luann because you a scallywag these scallywags with millions in the bank but they still scallywags so in any event I mean, she's out here showing everything. Like, nobody want to see your ball tea. Like, you know, that man was just being nice because he's hoping he's going to get a tip at the end of the day. I mean, like, come on, Luann. You're doing way too much. And you know what? I'm surprised. So far, I'm liking Teresa. Like, I used to like Teresa a lot. Then I stopped liking Teresa. 
but so far i'm liking Teresa, and i'm surprised i'm liking melissa i think melissa's my fate and then what kills me is i know kenya is beautiful you guys hear me say kenya is beautiful all the time i big up kenya all the time that's my girl point blank period but most of all of the girls on a real housewives of atlanta are my girls i've been watching the show not just for one person i've been watching the show for all of them because i don't have a problem with any of them i like what they do you know what i mean i talk i talk my ish and keep it moving but melissa melissa and the rest of these girls like kenya got a beautiful body she got a beautiful butt blasting the third but like they keep smacking her butt keep touching her butt you know keep you know you know like lifting up her thing like oh my god your butt's so beautiful so this so that and it is but it seems like they're doing it like you know they're putting kenya on a circus like it's a sideshow like they're doing it too much like they haven't seen big butts what year is it it's 2021 everybody sees big butts everybody <laughs> ramona and luann dry and desperate <laughs> like a dustpan <laughs> i i miss ap prayers peace and love i love you too sweetheart I'm just like, Lord, like they keep, and I think Melissa's fake. She's nice, but she's ruining her face too, like her um, sister in law did. But they keep coming after, like they're doing too much. And you know, when you have women like these women come after you and do all that stuff. They're only trying to set you up for the okie doke, but Kenya's ready because they're scared of Kenya. This is why they all call Cynthia Bailey. Remember at the, the first episode, Cynthia Bailey was like, all the housewives, they call me. And they wanted to know about Kenya because they never had any dealings with Kenya. And then, then Cynthia Bailey was like, I want to make them, I want to make Kenya feel comfortable. And she went out her way for Kenya. You shouldn't have did that. You should have just left it alone. You shouldn't have said shit, Cynthia. You'd be doing too much. You know what? And I understand why you do too much because I do too much. I'm that person that do too much. You know what I mean? And luckily, I have some people in my corner be like, yo, bitch, you're doing too much. You need to fall back. You're being overly too nice. Sometimes you can be too nice. You just want everything to be perfect. But at the same time, sometimes you just got to let shit be. You just got to let everything fall like it's supposed to fall. And you just got to mind your business sometimes. And Cynthia, you did too much with the cutting ribbon for Cynthia telling, I mean, for Kenya, saying Kenya should get this room. You did, That was nice. That's what a friend's supposed to be. And everybody on a plane was like, oh, Oh my god i didn't know that they were that close and now look you got kyle jumping in kyle's getting on my nerves even though i found out that she was on little house on a prairie i used to watch little house on a prairie every day after school because i didn't have cable and so i used to watch that all the time <laughs> i was like yeah i used to watch little house on a prairie all oh my god little house on a prairie I can tell you about each and every episode. I love Little House on the Prairie. I had, it was either Little House on the Prairie or Star Trek. Well, only two stations we had, okay? And we used to have a hanger wire, you know, to get the TV going. That was our antenna talk. That was our antenna back in the day. <laughs> Since your husband gives me special, oh, God. He gives me, since your husband gives me I think he's a good man. I think he's a good man, but he just like women. <laughs> That's say he's a good man, but he likes women. He's a protector. He's a very smart guy. He's very he's very intelligent, but he likes women. He likes to get it in. He, you know, just like I don't like to eat steak every night, he don't like to do Cynthia every night. <laughs> Let me stop. I'm already in trouble. <laughs> I'm already in trouble. Lord have mercy. Mike is cool. So, you know, so you got that situation. I would bring up some of the pictures, but in any of it, because I really wasn't going to talk about this. I did drop two videos about Girls Trip, but I do want to talk about Ramona's crazy. Ramona is off the chain. But at the same time, and I hate to say this because you know how I am. At the same time, I know she has did a whole lot of stuff on her show. But, you know, she's keeping it 100. She crazy and saying what's on her mind. You know what I mean? She ain't holding nothing in or nothing back. She's about to wild out. Ramona is crazy. I just can't wait for Teresa. Teresa, I want you to wild out. <laughs> I can't. But in any event, Cynthia, you know, thought 
that maybe she might have the upper hand. Maybe you know, she thought she did have the upper hand because everybody's calling her about, you know, Miss Kenya Moore. And then Kenya Moore get there and the ladies, they're afraid. They already seen how Kenya Moore read Ramona. And with Kenya Moore reading Ramona, excuse me, you have Teresa. Teresa was like, oh my God, Kenya Moore stood up for me against Ramona. I was like, why is this? This is a grown ass woman crying because Kenya Moore stood up for her. And I was like, damn, like they must really be treated like crap in their life. So in any event, so that happening. And then also you have, what's her name? Luann saying, oh my God, like, I'm so glad some people, somebody else can check Ramona because she's so embarrassing. Like Luann, why are you hanging with Ramona if you're embarrassed of her and all this other stuff? Like you agree with what she says. You agree with what you, she does because if any event, anybody else with their right sense of mind will not be friends with her. They will move on. Like it's, it's a certain amount of stuff that you take, but, but Luann, she likes abuse. You know, she likes it and she's dirty too as well because she was flirting with that married man and showing her body nobody want to see your body like it's a bunch of like i don't have friends that we be sitting around like oh let me show you this oh look at this oh look at that oh i'm gonna flash you we don't be doing that like we free we love our bodies and blase ain't a threat but we don't be going around doing all that like they be doing the most like you guys act like you're so desperate for attention like ain't you already on tv don't you got millions of people following you but you get on tv so desperate oh look at my body look what i got then you have what's her name um what luann crying like you know what luann and then you know what? i give luann this luann is not she's not drinking and everybody else is drinking right and so she's going along with the flow Kyle got insecurities, but yet she can't play Cynthia's game. But everybody else can go along with the flow with anything else. But Kyle's too good. To, even Ramona went along with Cynthia's game. Even Melissa. Mel and then Melissa's fake because then Melissa is acting like she has Cynthia's back. Oh, don't say anything else, Kyle. You know, it's, it's this 80 other questions that Cynthia has. And then when the next morning comes around, what, what do uh, Melissa do? Kyle comes outside. Kyle's been drinking 24 seven you know since she's been there and she's she was drunk at cynthia's party so as she wake up in the morning she's gonna go downstairs and tell melissa oh i think um cynthia's mad at me she's trying to start trouble like they're trying to divide cynthia and kenya and it's easy because then they don't have to focus on their self and it's just like cynthia and kenya you know are gonna have their fallout it's gonna be what it's gonna be it's gonna be bad but what do you say what do you do it is what it is. But I could see, like, they just... They, and then once Kenya tells Melissa and... And um, what's her name? Kyle. Cynthia's a little jealous. And Cynthia said that she was jealous. You know, sometimes people do get jealous because they see that you treating other people that you barely even know better than when you treat... Better than you treat me. And so... And Cynthia, you're just gonna have to get over it. Like, poor Cynthia. Cynthia don't even know where her ass is at. Poor thing. She should be on this show. These girls are already your friend. You should be on this rocking it, you know. And do you guys think the game that Cynthia chose was trivial, you know? But in any event, that's just the situation. <laughs> I was going to try. <laughs> so I'm just like, mm. it's like one of them situations. Kenya Moore would stand up for God to get some tea on it. <laughs> she <laughs> yeah, I've never heard that before. I never heard that before. <laughs> I never heard that before. Virgo crazy. I never heard that before. I wonder if they can smell the pee on Ramona. You said that the last time. Hanger and <laughs> back in the TV. I know this is back in the day, y'all. This is back in 1990. <laughs> We had that old new TV, baby. <laughs> so, you know, so that kind of like, let me see if I can get the picture. But it's just like, damn, I just hate to see the sisters go against each other. And they having this moment. And none of the other girls are having that moment. They keep they getting past it. But Cynthia is wearing her sleeve on her shoulder. But Cynthia, but um, Kenya Moore really disrespect her, though. Yo, yo, how you gonna come out hour late? Go get food, sit at the table. Don't even say sorry that I'm late. I'm sorry. All she said was, you know, um, <laughs> I got low blood sugar. And Cynthia's trying to respect everybody. 
and basically not eat, you're not going to eat before my friend gets downstairs and why couldn't you know can you just text you know cynthia i yell down the stairs hey listen i'm gonna be a little bit late because my makeup artist and why do you need a makeup artist when y'all are just sitting at this damn table you know what i mean you look beautiful you don't even need none of that kenya you know you don't even need none of that and it's just like damn like we we see them clash i already talked about um what's her name but um what's her name um tammy roman i don't mean to throw her in here but i am real quick so when you guys, I, I don't know which show she was on. She was on one of them shows. But how did Tammy Roman look to you when she was telling the story about her husband? She looked totally different to you. Did she look healthy to you? I just want to know your thoughts. So please jump down in the comment section and tell me what you think. I just had to throw that in there because as I'm looking for <laughs> the picture of... Um... So... So Kenya Moore sitting there, she's eating and everything. And um Kyle and Kyle is basically trying to fill out sent, trying to fill out Kenya Moore to see if Kenya Moore would take the bait and be like uh, with her. Because at first Kyle was trying to get, you know, Ramona. Ramona, she kind of didn't take the bait. She took the bait a little bit, like, oh, I don't know. But then she was real easy about it. And then Melissa told Kyle to, hey, you listen, she got 72 other questions so then kenya comes downstairs and she's like well kenya like i believe this is so trivial who's the prettiest i think it's trivial too as well but she took it to a whole different state because she has problems it's like you can't be yourself anymore you can't play the games that you want to play you can't talk like the way you want because everybody got issues like no deal with our issues let's all have these issues together we'll work through it you're supposed to be working through your issues anyway uh what's her name kyle because she told ramona she's gonna work through her issues every day and show a little skin show a little body because she got body issues and things of that nature she got problems but we all but cynthia can't play her game because you got issues then all of a sudden ramona got body issues now ramona's out here showing everything from left to right and now she got body issues and then melissa's like oh i got all types of issues i was like and to me i think Teresa was the realest when Teresa said my insecurity my issue is i don't want to grow old Old, you know getting old you know so then kenya you know she basically sides with kyle and you know cynthia felt at this moment that kenya could have said you know but it's a fun game it's a safe space for you that's what that's what cynthia said that kenya could have said and kenya was just making faces that cynthia was trying to give her a speech because cynthia was mad because now you got kyle coming for her and basically trying to ruin her moment and which they don't want nobody else to ruin their moment but now just because she feel this way you know kyle wants to rule ruined cynthia's moment and then she thought that her friend would be like okay try to calm that down and no kenya moore was like oh yes girl these are trivial games oh yes she's trying to marginalize us i was like damn that's so bad <laughs> i love tammy too concerned about her as well so in any event you know we'll talk about this another day too as well i just wanted to get on live and just say what's up to my peeps and my peoples because i haven't been live because you guys know i got the 19 and so you know i'm healing i'm getting back to myself i'm getting back to normal I, you know i get stuffed up a little time here and there and things of that nature but um I'm getting better and god is good baby my ancestors is good the world is good i'm good you know because i'm i could not be here you know what i mean i could be on a ventilator i could be in the hospital and things of that nature and that's not the case you know what i mean so i'm blessed baby stay woke stay blessed being good to others that shit do come back to you where when you get in a position like i am <laughs> you still living you still good you can still do the things that you need to do baby because you know i can't do everything but at the same time but it's crazy out here and i'm just i'm just glad that you know i'm not in the hospital to be honest with you i'm just glad that's not the case you know what i mean but in any event thank each and every one of you guys for com yeah commas real miss t <laughs> so um i was just really disappointed in everything i was really disappointed with kenya and really disappointed with Cynthia, how they, and Cynthia, you know, taking it there and, you know, wearing the anger on her face. That was really sad. And then Kenya going, Kenya talking to, you know, Kyle and talking to Ramona about, hey, listen, 
Cynthia is jealous. She's upset. Like, why would you tell them that? Because I'm not going to use that against Cynthia. Now they know her weakness. And they're going to try to be more buddy-buddy with Kenya to make Cynthia jealous. And then, you know, Cynthia was talking to, um, what's her name? Luann. I don't think Luann's really going to say anything about what Cynthia told her. But at the same time, they should have talked to each other and not to everybody else. In any event, we're going to see the shit fall apart. And we're going to be here. <laughs> <laughs> thank you virgo crazy that's that's what i'm trying to do that's why i'm taking breaks you don't see a hundred videos anymore thank you so much felicia butler thank you guys for even taking your time out and coming i really ralph yes act like she has backstage up there you guys are so wonderful peace and blessings to each and one of you guys um, I think there's a full moon or something going on. So whatever you wish for and whatever you want to happen, you want God to bless you, baby. That full moon is strong. So you better, you know, do what you need to do. But thank you guys so much. And I know I'm kind of rambling. I'm kind of all over the place. It's because I haven't been live in a minute. And there's so much I want to talk about. But at the same time, my energy is dialing back right now. So I got to go rest. But in any event, it was a great pleasure. You know, RIP, rest in power to Young Dolph. And I feel really bad for his family that they're going through this situation. And it's just that the whole world knew, you know, what Young Dolph was going through. And everybody knew that he had a contract on him because there's multiple stories of him escaping like a cat with nine lives. And then, you know, it's just really, really sad. And then the bakeries closed down. They got a GoFundMe where Young Dolph, you know, departed from this earth at. And then, you know, hearing Portia's story about R. Kelly, like, I didn't think that was going to happen. I was like, whoa. And then, you know, Young Pharaoh, like, damn, I, I'm watching the Sparrow. I'm watching him Sparrow out. But I didn't know he was going to take it to that level where he used what he did at his, you know, lit up the house with lead. That his kids and his baby mama's in. You, know, you never know what somebody's thinking. How much pain that they're going through. That they might just do something. Because we all know that we think about doing things that we know we can't do. But we want to do it so bad. But the, the, the God, our ancestors, and just us being people, period. Saying we can't do that. But there's some people that can't hold themselves back. Them voices win. And this is what happened. That voice won in his head. It's just sad. Cynthia is a grown woman. Stand up for yourself. Lord, she should have told Kenya right at the table, like, girl, why are you doing this? And then, you know, Cynthia and, you know, Kenya had that argument. And um, Cynthia was like, that was Ramona. You would have went off. And she was like, yeah, I would have. I would have said something. And so basically Kenya was telling Cynthia, you need to speak up for yourself. Then you check her. She tried to check, you know, um, Kyle, but Kyle tried to keep. She was throwing a rock. Oh, I'm sorry. Oh, she was. She, Kyle would throw the rock and be like, "I'm sorry. I really don't want to play this game. Oh my God, this just demeans us. I'm sorry." <laughs> so she was so you know Cynthia. Yeah, Cynthia get it together. But at the same time, when you got your girl at the end of the table sitting next to that person, you need some support, and that support wasn't there. Point blank. Period. So, Cynthia, I don't know what to tell you, man. Kenya, them women are only being nice to you because they don't want you to read them. But I guarantee you, once once all this is over, they're going to talk so much smack, it won't be funny. They knew that, they know they can run over Cynthia, but they know they can't run over Kenya. But at the same time, you, you know, we just need to see our people stand up and stand together sometimes. Forget if we forget it. Like, yo, like, Lord. And and um, Kenya said, I'm not going to, you know, like, you know, this is, you know, this is not Atlanta. You know, you can't play these type of games with them. Like, they're not here for the shade. They're not here for reading. They're not here for none of that. You know what I mean? Maybe you got to adapt. Maybe you got to do different. Cynthia was like, I did. I did. I kept adapting. I kept changing. They was making Cynthia sweat. And it was laughing at her at the same time, even her own friend. <laughs> I know. Thank you guys so much. Yes, rest in peace. Yo, something happened. Dolph, there was an earthquake after he passed. 
And then now they're closing down everything in Memphis. Like, you know, something something's really about to pop off. Stay prayed up. Pray for your family. Pray for your loved ones. Pray for the world. And do what you need to do to make sure you're safe and your family's safe and you're protected. Have You got to have all the shields and the armor in the world, baby. It's about to be 2022. Peace and love.